Yo, what's going on guys? This is the 4th Gen Gamer bringing you guys a tutorial video on how to get the best settings for the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Wii. Now this will be for Windows, however the settings should be relatively similar for other platforms such as Mac or Linux, with some options either being gone or added. With that being said, first of all, how do you get this emulator? Go to dolphin-mu.org and go over to the download area and you will have the option of getting either a stable version or a development version. The stable versions have been very rigorously tested and should have really not that many bugs, however it may not have addressed other issues that have been brought up. Now, development versions add changes very frequently. I mean, you can see here 16 hours ago, 18 hours ago, they are released very frequently and may introduce other bugs, but may fix other ones that are already present and improve the experience. So, pick whichever one that you want. I am going to be using the development version, but the settings should be nearly, if not identical, no matter what version that you get. With that being said, I'll show you guys what settings are going to be important in terms of smooth gameplay. Everything else is up to you in terms of what controller that you're using, which path you're going to use to get your games, and so on and so forth. With that, under the configuration menu here, general is all you're going to be worried about. And with that, make sure you enable these first two checkboxes. Those are going to be very important. Keep that at 100%. And also, if you'd like, keep this on to enable statistics reporting so you can help the developers improve the experience as they try to fix bugs. Also, you have the recompiler here. Go ahead and just choose that one. You don't want to do anything else because then that could mess up your experience. And with that also, just under audio, make sure all of this is matching what I have up here. It's not really worth changing to anything else. Just keep it the way it is and your sound should be the best that it possibly can be. With that, nothing else under the config menu will be important to you and it's just up to you what you'd like to do for anything else under personal preference. Now under the graphics tab, you have the back end. You want to usually keep this at OpenGL. You could experiment with some other ones. Some may work better than others, but just as a general kind of blanket rule, you know, OpenGL is the best usually. And this should be the only option if you are on a Mac. Now for display, I would keep this under auto. I mean, you could change it to something custom, but just let the emulator do it on its own. That's probably the best bet for you. And the aspect ratio, you could do auto or I personally like 16 by nine, but that shouldn't affect your experience. Also, I would keep V-Sync on. Keep full screen on if you like. You can toggle that with F11 as you're playing. With that, these are all other kind of just extra options that you don't really have to do unless you'd like and that shouldn't really affect your playing experience too much. You could just keep those all unchecked for your best experience in terms of not introducing anything extra though. Now you have enhancements. Now this is depending on your computer. Now if you do not really have the best computer, your computer may be a laptop or just a weaker machine, then you're gonna wanna keep a lot of this minimal. You can start to play around with this once you have a smooth gaming experience with this. However, just keep it at the base configuration before you start fiddling with things. So, at internal resolution, you can keep that auto window size or auto multiple of 640 by 528 and as you start to see that it runs smoothly, if you'd like, you can bump it up. However, you could always be safe with this internal resolution. With that being said, if you do have a problem in full screen, if it starts to lag in full screen only, change it to native and that should solve that problem. Anti-aliasing, this is an added effect. If your computer is powerful enough, you can bump it up as much as you'd like. However, if your computer is not as, you know, powerful, you can just keep it at none. Anti... Anti... Thing? Yeah, anti... Anisotropic. That is how you say that, right? So we're gonna go... We're gonna go whatever you guys want. If you have a weak computer, keep it at one. If you can take it, you can bump it up if you'd like. My computer probably could take up to 8, maybe 16, but for your experience, 1 may be the best that you can get, maybe higher, you may be sacrificing some frames per second. As far as post-processing, wow, words, I can't say them. Anyway, we have a bunch of different options here. If you're going to pick one, I would personally say FXAA, however, it's up to you. Uh, probably off is going to be your best bet if you have a weaker computer, like I said. This emulator can be very demanding on your computer, and you're going to want to keep a lot of these things toned down if you have an older computer. With that, keep everything else here turned on, uh, except for the widescreen hack. Now, some of these specific enhancements will end up 
breaking some games and you will have to fiddle with them, but this is kind of just a general good set of uh, checkboxes, I guess. You can say this is a good configuration to have. So 3D, you want to keep that off. Under hacks, keep all of this the way that it is right now. You don't really want to change this in most cases. And then advanced, you want to just keep all that blank unless you're doing something specific and you have a specific goal that you're trying to do. Anyway, that is it for your best experience and for each game there are going to be very specific, you know, problems and different bugs that are very specific to every game. So if you want to play a game consistently and you'd like to see specific problems with that game, as you saw I just navigated to the compatibility tab here on their site. And let's say that we wanted to play, let's go to M, let's play Let's play Mario Kart. Can we find Mario Kart on here? Let me, uh, yeah, Mario Kart Double Dash. So you can see if this has five stars, that means it's perfect, not really any bugs, and it will address over here any problems. So you can see this doesn't really have anything crazy wrong with it, but if there's a glitch that you are finding with the game, they probably addressed it on this forum. So if you see something is wrong, if you think something isn't right, then go to the forum and find the game and it may be addressed. You may have to click a little checkbox, a very specific uh, hack that they added to it to make it work. With that being said guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, of course, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. And that's about it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.